Hello, everybody. Welcome to another session of uh, Dog Trivia with Dog Spot. Uh, we have been thinking for a long time to do something different. And this time we thought that, you know, we should uh, discuss with our viewers various aspects of the canine world and dogs as pets, which are not normally discussed. So we are not going to do grooming or training or care or breed specific sessions. What we are going to do is something. And the title of uh, the session is very interesting. It says, we are going to talk of almost everything that you don't need to know about dogs. So it is truly a trivia session. And we have named it Dog Spot Trivia, Dogs in Legends and Fables. Uh, basically, what I want to tell you about is, you know, when we talk about dogs, we talk about pets and how they were domesticated, etc. But we rarely actually go into the history of when this entire thing came about. So I was curious as, as uh, uh, about 30, 35 years ago, I was curious to know how this thing of domestication and breeding, etc. happened. And then when we uh, discussed this, we discussed the fables associated with so I don't know if how many of you know that, you know, uh, it's about 15,000 years ago that dogs actually became part of the human life. And, uh, and then uh, there's a chronology which we shall discuss during our session. But let me tell you in the beginning, it's not going to be a long session. It's a short session. It's got a different format. And the idea is to involve as many people as possible. So we are going to throw in a quiz and all the viewers are free to answer the questions. The questions will be simple. They'll be based on the topics that we are discussing that day. This is a trial session and we hope to have one such session every week in the ensuing weeks. So these uh, prizes would be distributed and uh, whoever is the winner, we'll try and contact you through a direct message or an email. So please uh, join in and enjoy the session. And this is pure trivia. Uh, today, we are going to discuss uh, the history, the mythology, the chronology, dogs that have become famous or venerated or respected, and lots of these aspects. So let me go straight. Let me uh, go straight into the first part of the discussion today, which is interesting. It's called. Uh, uh, mythology. Now, it could be Hindu mythology or Greek mythology or Egyptian mythology or Aztec or Chinese or Christianity, whatever. So we'll pick up little trivia from each of these and see uh, whether you people find it interesting. So let's say, okay, Hindu. Now, uh, we'll come to this question in a bit. And the first thing is, uh, I don't know how many of you know that what is the word for dogs that is used in the Hindu scriptures, whether it's the Vedas or the Puranas or the Upanishads, what is the word used for the word uh, for the uh, for dogs in these scriptures? And the word is Shwan. It's a Sanskrit word. It's S H V A N. And I don't know if my dear friend Mr. C M Sharma from Delhi is watching. His kennel is called Shwan One, and it's from that word that he's picked it up. So you know it's. This word Shwan is mentioned in the Vedas. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, a few questions related to it. Uh, let's come. Where are the, which are the regions in India or nearby where dogs are worshipped? We all know that they are worshipped in Nepal. We all know that they are venerated and worshipped in North Bengal and Sikkim. Likewise, there is reference to uh, a word and uh, please make note of it. It's Sarama, S-A-R-A-M-A. -A -A. Sarama is a mytholo uh, mythological being, and she is a female form of dog that is referred to in the Rig Veda as the mother of all dogs. Now, uh, in uh, Vedic mythologies and interpretations, she is described uh, as the mother particularly of two four-eyed brindle dogs which belonged to the god Yama. So Yama had dogs and Yama's dogs were two four-eyed brindled dogs and she's the mother of those dogs and she's called Sarama. So make a note of this. We might come back and ask you a question about it. 
uh, sarma is also uh, referred to in many scriptures there is reference to sarma being uh, in the mahabharata if you remember yudhishthira when he is walking up to heavens has a little dog following him and when he goes to the gates of heaven he seeks god's permission to let the dogs enter uh, his dog enter the uh, heaven and it is a fable it is legend that that dog was actually yama himself who had taken the form of god to check uh, whether yudhishthira would actually seek permission to let his dog enter heaven and that test to yudhishthira was able to pass amongst the various tests that life presented to him so uh, that's uh, something which is interesting uh, moving across the universe uh, globe right across into aztecs now the aztecs considered dogs a major religious symbol and if there is a word which you can make note of it is x o l o t i solity and that is a word from which the present uh, zolot kuntu the the aztec breed actually takes its name so the aztecs uh, considered it the god of death it's a beautiful breed uh, and and you should all go and search the net to see what the aztec connection to the breed was so z o l o t i likewise you know uh, the chinese of course i ask a question so i'm holding that bit of information back the dogs figure very very uh, they have an important place in chinese mythology in chinese astrology and one of our questions will soon come up related to that in christianity too you know i am just picking up bits and pieces of information because it's called trivia there is saint rocco which is uh, the patron saint of dogs so find time go to saint rocco look up and you would all have heard of uh, the story that jesus narrates of lazarus and his wounds being licked by dogs so uh, to cure him so there is a mention of dogs in christianity to that extent uh, in uh, egypt most definitely they have uh, a very sacred role and they have a prominent place in the egyptian form of religion likewise in the greek Uh, mythology the uh, artemis and uh, anubis and all those references to dogs and uh, there's a a question i would be asking later related to the uh, greek connection with dogs but coming back to uh, india uh, i have a question and we'll put it up for you just have a look at this question and see which god in the hindu pantheon has a dog as his vehicle and what is the name of this dog so this is a question i am setting up i have uh, uh i invite answers we are going to be making a list of all the people who give the correct answers and the maximum correct answers out of the five questions that i put up today we will be happy to give him an award and him or her an award and then send it uh, through a direct message or an email so please note the question and be careful with the wording which god in the hindu pantheon has a dog as his vehicle and what is the name of his dog and as a hint we have put up this picture this picture will give you some sort of it might mis- be misleading so be careful but note the question and be ready with your answer and if you want you can send in your answers straight into the comments column i am getting answers already ruhi kulkarni has an answer sandeep athaiya has an answer meera thosar has an answer that's wonderful guys i'm not going to disclose the answer but it's good to see you participating but you all the answers i'm getting on comments are not giving me the name of the dog so that's only half the answer i said be careful we want both parts which hindu god what is the name of the dog right so we even more interesting this is just a trivia reference to the um, mythology related to the canine world in the various parts of the world okay now let's say ah uh, this is interesting we are moving on to the second part and the second part is 
true knowledge. So like I said, we have uh, recorded uh, the history of uh, dogs being domesticated and becoming part of human life 15,000 years ago. And there's a very, very interesting quote I'd like to read. This is by Conrad Lawrence, the famous uh, writer in the Man Meets Dog, his book. And he says, there are only two animals that have entered the human household otherwise than as prisoners and become domesticated by other means than those of enforced servitude. So they were not prisoners and they were not enforced into servitude. And there are only two such animals which have entered the human household, the dog and the cat. And this happened. And then we have definitive evidence from 11,000 years ago in Iran. There is a reference of 7,500 BC in Yorkshire. There are lucky charms from 7th BC in Assyria. And uh, there's reference in the Mesolithic Age and the Neolithic Age. And I'm going to ask, throw in another bit of important information now, which you can note now. There are paintings of dogs in the Hierakonopolis, in the Greek uh, uh, civilization, which are 3600 BC. There is reference of Swiss lake dweller dogs, 4000 BC. There is foundation of the Susa culture and the Saluki type of dog, 4200 BC. So lovely bits of information is available I will give you the name of the book I consult after the session, otherwise my session will lose all its charm. And there is a massive crouching dog, dog with huge head and shoulders in terracotta in Kotail, which is of 7th century BC. So there is some wonderful information in chronology, which you must follow. And uh, there's question number two coming up for you. Make a note. Question number two, this is also related, that's right. In Greek mythology, when Zeus, Zeus, as you all know, is the king of the gods. In Greek mythology, when Zeus was a baby, which dog was given the task of protecting him? Now, I don't want the breed here. I want the type of dog or what it was called. There is a particular word that is used in Greek mythology for the dog that was given the task of protecting Zeus. So ladies and gentlemen, make a note of it. I don't see more comments coming in. So Greek mythology has to be brushed up. Think of Zeus and which dog? Google will have it. So don't worry too much. I'll give you the name of the book later. So that's the second question for the day. And if you need to get a basket ready for your prizes, you need to find the answers. In Greek mythology, when Zeus was a baby, which dog was given the task of protecting him? Till you find the answers, we move on. We go back to chronology and while you are searching for the answer to question two, I will quickly throw up question three. Question three is related to chronology. And the question three is, in ancient Egypt, there are a lot of inscriptions in the pyramids and on the tombs. I'll ask my back-end team to uh, throw the question. Can I have that question, please? The ancient Egypt question. No, that's the second one. That's the Greek mythology. Yes. The pyramids and tombs in ancient Egypt have many inscriptions of tombs. The question is, which is the breed that these is resemblance to? Okay, Sandeep Athaya is really firing away. He's got the answer to question one. He's got the answer to question two. And he's tried his hand at, yes, question two as well. Now, Sandeep, go on, keep it up and try and give me the answer to three. The pyramids and tombs in ancient Egypt have many inscriptions of dogs. Which is the breed that these inscriptions have the closest resemblance to? If you think this is tough, I'm going to throw in a hint. I don't know if my backend team has that picture. 
can we bring up that picture which i sent to you uh, slowly of the hint to this or if it's difficult let it be i don't know if you can do it anyway till she tries so we'll try and give you a hint maybe a little later but let me tell you in uh, that 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 question can be answered by remembering the name of or the title that was given to egyptian kings if you can remember the title that that was given to egyptian kings you might be able to get an answer to this question which is purely related to egyptian uh, civilization okay we are 15 minutes into the show and we don't have too much of time today so we move on to the next session the next topic is dogs that have venerated in history when i say venerated it is respect it is worship it is to be held in awe so this is an interesting part of our discussion today what are the dogs that are venerated in uh, various civilizations okay now the karak and the navajo indians in america they held their dogs in high esteem the karak and navajo red indian tribes in the us held their dogs in high esteem uh, the question might be so go and study this part it's very interesting in arabia no you know the general feeling is dogs are considered unclean and so dogs are not uh, domesticated but you'd be surprised to know that in arabia the saluki the modern day saluki which is traditionally a middle eastern breed the saluki was considered a gift of allah it was so venerated it was so prized that the natives of arabia considered the saluki a gift of allah and it is to them that the first medication the first medical attention to the canine world goes uh, the credit for that goes to the arabians and to the saluki breed so please make a note in arabia then let's go on to the arctic the eskimos and mark my word the eskimos treat dogs as the father of the human family it is so important in their lives so much a part of their daily routine that the eskimo considers the dog as the father of the family and uh, these are things that we should learn from all dog lovers that are here watching today or are missing out and will watch later uh, so much of veneration so much of respect given to the canine uh, member of the family in egypt and we will be coming on to the next question from this bit of information which i give to you in egypt sirius was heralded as the vital and for the vital annual overflow of the nile river now the question if my back and team can put it up is very interesting which star is called a dog star and it belongs to which constellation which star is called a dog star and it belongs to which constellation now we know that there are two constellations so which constellation does the dog star belong to and what is the name of the star and uh, i might have already given you a hint when i was speaking about egypt so if you guys were listening to what i said you should be having the answer it's very easy and it was so venerated and they were considered and given the task of temple guards so we have seen now reference in the hindu mythology reference in greek mythology reference in aztec mythology reference in egyptian mythology in the middle east in mesopotamian and arabian culture and also in christianity so there is no uh, part of the world and no race or civilization that has not venerated or given respect to this our best companion and it's interesting to you know keep reading these small bits of reference in their literature in their mythology to this beautiful creature of god okay interesting thing i have 
for the veneration. In even uh, Africa, of course, we have spoken of Egypt, but even in main, uh, Africa, in Ethiopia, a donkey, if it found, it found that the government was good. And if it ground, it found that the government was bad. So you have the dog being elected by ancient Ethiopians as a king, and based on its reaction, the assessment of the government was made. Fond, good, growled, bad. Another interesting bit of information coming from the ancient world. We'll gradually move to the modern world as we do session after session after session. Sandeep Athaya has got answers to the question on the dog star and the constellation. Good, keep going, Sandeep. We need more answers. And why only Sandeep? Why are all our other friends not answering? Anyway, the next bit of information which I want to give is uh, from Alexander the Great. We all know Alexander the Great and his conquest of the world and how he came to India. So if my backend team can flash that, I'd like to show you a photograph. The next one. No, the next one. Yup. Peritus was Alexander the Great's favorite dog. And this dog accompanied Alexander the Great in his military exploits. Alexander the Great was so much in love with his dog, he venerated him and adored him to such an extent that he named the city after Peritus. And he erected a statue in his glory in the central square. This is the picture of that statue. So when you get time, ladies and gentlemen, search Peritus, P-E-R-I-T-A-S, and you will find a whole lot of Google information on Peritus and his linkages with Alexander the Great and the uh, this 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 wonderful statue. So that is uh, the next part, and then we are moving on to the question which I have on China. Ruhi Kulkarni says, "No idea on the Egyptian dog. If I have to make a wild guess based on your hint, then okay, good." Yeah, don't make a wild guess. Make a calculated, well thought out guess and send us the answers and we'll come back to you. Ruhi says she's missed the constellation question completely. Saloni, can we have the constellation question back, please? For the benefit of our friend Ruhi Kulkarni, let's have the constellation question back. Okay, Ruhi, this is for you. Which star is called the dog star and it belongs to which constellation? If you've noted it, we can move on and we can go back to another question I have, which is related to mythology, astronomy, astrology, whatever you feel like, maybe. Okay, let's go to the question on the Chinese uh, astrology. We have another question coming up and I presume this is question number five, the fifth question for the day. Which was the last Last year of the dog, according to the Chinese zodiac. I am sure all of you know how many animals are associated with the Chinese zodiac. It is 12. The dog is one of those 12. And each animal of that list of 12 is allotted a year. So the question is, which was the last year of the dog according to the Chinese zodiac. You can choose the present year or any years in the past that you think is the right answer. And that would be question number five, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, we are waiting for a lot of responses to come in. And uh, uh, I will take this uh, extra five minutes that I have with myself now to talk about Another bit of Hindu mythology. We have a popular, respected, venerated god, which is the Lord Dattareya. D-U-T-T-A-T-R-A-Y-A. 
Lord Dattareya. Now, does anybody have any idea of what is Dr. Dattare, uh, Lord Dattareya's connection with the canine world? Lord Dattareya legend has, and our scriptures say, had four dogs. And these four dogs represent the four Vedas. So, so close is our association with the canine world that the Lord Dattareya's dogs are equated with the four Vedas. So whenever you read about Dr. Lord Dattareya or you come across an image, please try and make note of where those four dogs are and what their significance is. So uh, they were also called the protectors of the gates of heaven and hell. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of information that we would be sharing it would become lighter and more uh, relevant in today's terms as we go through these different sessions. But uh, I would like all of you to be involved. Uh, Mr. Digvijay, the dog star is so and so, consolation is so and so. I'm not going to reveal the answer, Mr. Yadav. Thank you for your response. And I'm sure everybody will have their own responses. But we will be very, very happy to get as many responses as possible. Keep sending them in. And that is what will encourage us to give these kind of sessions. Uh, our sessions will have various parts as the weeks go along. One of the things that we are thinking of is uh, uh, dogs in literature, dogs in um, movies, dogs in cartoon films. Then small trivia about the tallest dog, the smallest dog, the largest litter the oldest dog, and all those kinds of stuff. And uh, I have a book here, which I can give you a fleeting glimpse of and then hide. That is the book that we shall be referring to. It's an old book. I'm not sure if it's still available. But... Uh, ah! The Sauparno Majumdar is cracking a joke. He says there's no last year for dog for the Chinese. The Chinese KFC serves them each day. Uh, that's not in good taste, Soparno. That is uh, something that the world has raised and uh, the Chinese are, are looking into it. But that is something which is purely their, their, uh, their, their cultural aspect. And I don't think Dogspot would like to make any comment on uh, this aspect. So, uh, you know, uh, your comment is accepted, but it's not what dog spot feeds. So we are going to refrain from making any comment on the Chinese uh, cultural uh, aspect of KFC serving dogs. Anyway, sorry for the uh, this thing. Um, uh, right. So, okay. What I was saying is that we will be covering different topics and we would like suggestions. Please keep sending us your suggestions on more such topics that could be covered. Uh, there is an in interesting uh, you know uh, uh, aspect of this uh, quiz which we will be entering and that is dogs in paintings and dogs in statues and how expensive some of those uh, world famous paintings are how beautiful the statues are which have you know uh, dogs as their main subject and there are collectors uh, in, in 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 metal in marble in uh, porcelain so hopefully over the next uh, few days we will be able to show you some of the collections of these beautiful paintings and statues and tapestry and the idea is to uh, make these light sessions get our people involved and have a whole lot of you coming up with these answers so um, uh, thank you very much for tuning in today and uh, I, I hope you found it interesting uh, on behalf of dog spot I would just like to say again that this is a uh, new beginning we are trying to do something different uh, it'll take us time to settle in but we would welcome your comments and uh, this part of it should be well received so uh, thank you for your time today in the evening and i promise to come back to you within a week with some more interesting trivia um, thank you saloni and dog spot for this opportunity and uh, see you soon guys have a good evening Bye.